Greeting Server Admin. Today we'll be going through a quick and easy way to get a dedicated server up and running. I previously created a tutorial for how to do it through command prompt and steam command. And this time I'll show how to do it through the steam application itself. So why do you want to run a dedicated server? If you're doing multiplayer with friends, starting the game within the client is possible. But it has the problem of tying the process of the server to the process of the client. Meaning that if the client software crashes, which means your game, so does the server. Likewise, performance is mixed up with the client. Running it separately often does come with a smoother performance overall. As an added bonus, using a dedicated server allows for using server management software like 7 Days to Die Rat, which at least to me is worth it all on its own. I will link the 7 Days to Die Rat tutorial I made in the description below. So first step, go to Steam. Done. So we're here in Steam. Second step, you need to hit the library tab. You need to go to tools. Normally we're in games, but you need to go to tools. That will display all the tools available. Usually it's different servers or game tools for the individual games. In this case, we care about the 7 Days to Die dedicated server. We're going to right click and we're going to hit install game. You can change the folder, but I'm just going to leave it default. Hit next and it's going to create some local files and it's going to start downloading. And then after a while, Steam has downloaded and installed it. And it's actually ready to go. If we wanted to, we could just right click and play game and it would start the server. Unfortunately, it would also be using the default settings, which normally you don't want, but it is installed already. Instead, we're going to right click and go to properties. Here we're going to go to local files and we're going to do browse local files. That's going to open up the folder which contains all the game files. As you see, it's located in the Steam directory. Personally, I would go up, I would then take this folder, I would do a cut and I would go to my C drive and place it somewhere else. So why would I do that? Well, the way Steam works is that for all installed games and tools such as the dedicated server, Steam will keep it up to date unless you specifically tell it not to do that. This carries the risk that the game will be updated without you realizing it. And if the update is not backward compatible, such as happened between 16.3 and 16.4 for instance, or even 16.4 and alpha 17 when it comes out, it will update and if you start the game without realizing, you've immediately started corrupting your world file. Sure, you could have a backup maybe, but if you don't have a backup, you have a lot of problems. But even if you have a backup, it still means you need to restore the potentially older backup and reinstall the correct 7 days to die server version. By moving this folder somewhere else, the Steam application will not find it where it was installed, so it never will be updating it. Alternatively, you can go to the Betas tab and you can select which version of the game you want to have. So if I select Alpha 16.4 Stable, it means that it will never change to a different one. The default setting is basically to have opt out of all beta programs and then it will update if there is a newer version. So let's select the 16.4 and let's close. It doesn't really matter though because I shifted over to Games 7 Days to Die dedicated server folder. Now we're back here. So the server has been installed, but we want to configure it. So we're going to open up serverconfig.xml to configure the server. So we're going to do that in Notepad++ because it's pretty easy because it color codes. Now you have all the game options here. A few things that you probably want to make sure you change. You might not want to have a public server. So I'm just going to turn that to false. The server password to log in. Let me just change that to VED. You could also change, you know, the name with the description. You could change things such as, you know, if you drop everything on quit, the Blood Moon enemy account, the loot, etc, etc, etc. Read through the different options. The comments here are pretty generous and should explain it pretty well. So we're just going to save it. Go back to the folder and we're going to double click the start dedicated.bat. So it's going to say file not found. It doesn't really matter. Starting the server. And now it's running. So how do we know that the server is really running and working? Well, you open up a command prompt. You do talent local host 8081, which is the default port. And if it connects, like it says here, it says it's 16.4, dedicated server, the game mode, 
my game, which was the name difficulty two, which basically means it's working. If you can't even get to this place, if it won't connect, it generally means that the server has not started up properly. The server process might be visible in task manager, but if this doesn't come up, it means it hasn't started properly. Now, if you have issues with Telnet, that's pretty common. Telnet for some reason is disabled in Windows 10 by default. I'm leaving a link in the description to a resource showing how to re-enable it. Or just do a web search for Windows 10 enable Telnet and you should find it. To exit the server, try to not kill the process. Instead, use the console and type shutdown. That will gracefully shut down the server. If you kill it, you risk corruption of the data or other losses due to it ending prematurely before it saved everything. So what if you've done all this, but something seems to have gone wrong. You can't tell it to it and the process is running, but you don't know what's gone wrong. Well, normally you go to seven days to die server data folder and you look at the output log. So let's open that up. It has a lot of information that you normally don't have to care about, but you, what you want to look for is that it's started the game. If there is an issue with the server, normally somewhere up ahead, it will indicate what's happened. Maybe you can't find a file. Maybe something else is wrong. Maybe something got corrupted. Maybe you messed up an XML file as you were editing it. Now, how do you resolve that? Well, there's a few ways. You could go back and hand edit it or the fastest way is go to properties, local files and verify the integrity of the game files. Now, what happens is that it will make sure that any files you've changed, such as the server config.xml, will be back to pristine condition. Now, in my case, because I shifted the folder, it will basically just take all of the files once again. So that's why it's doing a full updating and downloading of all the files. And again, as mentioned, it's because it can't find where I shifted it to on the C drive. But restoring the game files and verifying it might be a way to recover if you have some issue. Normally, the problems that I have run into is that I did a download, it didn't finish properly, or I managed to mess up a file. And the easiest way is just to re-download it again. So once all this is done, go get 7 Days to Die Rat or similar and make running a server even more fun and at least far easier. So if you like this small guide, then by all means, like the video and subscribe and enjoy your shiny new server. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedit community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link below.